Hi everyone, welcome. This is Lisa from Stamp and Create with Lisa. Um, if you just give me one second here, I'm just trying to find it so that I can see your comments on my computer. This part always just takes a minute, unfortunately. Once it's loaded, it's good to go, but it takes a minute to, because uh, there's always a delay with Facebook. Awesome. So, I am now live on my page, so that's a good thing. So, welcome. I'm Lisa from Stamp and Create with Lisa, and today I am going to show you a brand new suite that just launched for customers today called the Ornate Garden Suite. And in this line of products, there's actually a fair bit. So there's this ornate style um, stamp set, which is images only. It's super cute, lots of fun to color, but then you've also got some, I don't even know what you would call them, this one a bracket, but you've got some things that are more decorative as well. This would be, make a really great background to repetitively stamp. Then you have the ornate thanks. So there's thank you, so grateful, and thanks. And some people would stop there, but you really need to read some of the font or some of the um, script sayings. So there's why, my friend, seriously, ever so much, from the bottom of my heart, I'm, I wasn't sure how to, for everything, just wanted to say, your kindness is so loved, you made my day, so here's a card for all your help, you're amazing from all of us for all you do. So the, some of these sentiments would actually um, work really well with your favorite birthday sentiment or your favorite hello, lots of other things, not just the thank you. Next, there is the Ornate Floral 3D Embossing Folder. And you can see on it, it matches a lot of the paper that I'm gonna show you in just a second. But new embossing folders are always fun. Then these are the Ornate Borders dies. Get them out. So you have these that you can add to different borders or different edges. You've also got the individual flowers that you could line up with these to make them 3D or you could put them sporadically somewhere else on the page. You've got the daisy, um, the outline for I believe that's for the daisy. I did not line it up beforehand and I probably should have. You know what, I don't think it is. I think it's actually, there we go, it's for the rose. Like that. So this would line up so that you can cut this out completely. So it would actually, sorry, sit on this side of it. Because right now one side cuts and the other side would stay on to make it a true border. Put that back before I lose it. Then there's this um, scalloped edge with the little eyelets. Then there's the bigger scalloped edge too along with the little eyelets. When I first started scrapbooking a very long time ago, <laughs> um, this one here, we used to have a punch that looked like that. I don't know if anybody remembers that. But... Uh, Maybe when it's not. We used to have a punch that looked like that and one that was very similar but not quite as delicate with as this one. I guess the punches wouldn't have been as delicate as either but still the, the outer edge of it. Threading water maybe? Does that sound familiar to anybody? So I'm gonna stick those back. There is also another set of dies. So this to me, I was just explaining to my team, is very overwhelming on one page. However, when you take them apart, how cute is that border with just the scalloped edge with the little eyelets peeking through and the stitching? Then there is also the floral on its own, like the flor floral edging. There's a stitched rectangle and oh, stuck on there. This um, floral that you could use as kind of a window to peek back into something as well, or just as decoration. Like, they're so cute and there's so many of them. So you get the idea though. This is the one I'm gonna use later. 
um, a little bit more of a fl full flower on the edge. So that's always helpful. And then another one that's kind of an inlay piece here as well. So on their own, I love them. This is just a lot of metal with a lot of crazy parts to me. Um, I really had to take them apart to make them work for my eye. So the paper for this line has a couple different colors. So there's a brand new color in here called Bumblebee, which is this yellow color here. It is not released yet, but you definitely don't need it to play with this now. There's Old Olive, Terracotta Tile, Mint Macaron, and Early Espresso also in this color family. And then the papers. So the papers are lots of fun. There's this sunflower. The back side of it is this gold embossed piece. Then after that, I love the colors in this um, with the lots of pink flowers. We really need the sunshine and rainbows these days. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Valerie. Welcome. This might actually be my favorite piece. Um, it's the mint macaron, but it has the gold and it's the scallopy um, print on it. This one would be really cute, especially for baby cards or for Easter cards. Then there's the gold embossed flowers. This would also be really cute for Easter or for babies. Or for anything, really, but in particular, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Sorry, there's a piece of paper. Um, old Olive with the gold embossing again. I don't know. My video is like four sheets behind up on my screen, so I apologize. I don't know whether you can see it or not very well, but there you go. Oh, they're finally caught up with me, so yes. Um, this is the sheet I'm going to use today, the yellow with the daisies. Then this one, again, would be just a great generic with the pink. Then we have the colored floral and this really cute green as well. So really cute, really sweet papers. I'm going to put my cardstock on top so I can reach it, although I think I have what I need. Um, Obviously, with COVID, my son is home today, so we may get interrupted, we may not. My aim is to not, but it does mean that I have to be fairly quick to be safe. So I have most of this pre-cut. So to start, this card base is five and a half by eight and a half. I've scored it at four and a quarter, and then I've scored it again partway at two and one eighth to create an upright Z-fold card. Then I have taken, and this particular piece of paper is cut to two inches by five and three eighths, I believe is the magic number, because five and a half minus an eighth. And I'm going to put my tear tape on the back. Someday I will be organized enough to have the tear tape already on the back, <laughs> but that's just not the way things go right now. Okay. And there we go. Okay. So I also have, I pre-cut my inserts for cards. This is pre-cut to four inches by five and a quarter. So I'm actually going to put an edge all the way around it. And I think I'm gonna do that in Old Olive. So I have my trimmer. I'm trying to grab my paper. This is what happens when you set your paper back far too far away. Okay. So normally I would cut it at five and a half, but I'm gonna cut it at five and three eighths. And then I'm going to cut it instead of four and a quarter, I'm going to cut it at four and one eighth. And that will give me a nice little photo mat or insert mat, however you want to look at it, just so it has that nice little green and white edge. 
and our tear tape. And apparently one of my neighbors has, I don't know if you guys can hear it, has her music up really loud and we're in the country so the fact I can hear it is a little concerning but that's okay okay there and I just did that size wise to match up with the size of the daisies there and I just I find it's more visually pleasing when everything lines up at the top and bottom so things are the same size oh you can barely hear it I'm glad you can barely hear it my windows windows are actually closed I had them open this morning but I went around and closed them earlier because the heat was kicking on it's a beautiful sunshiny day but it's cold out and actually it looks like the sun may have gone away so I pre-cut um, two of these one from thick white cardstock and one from old olive and it's actually this rectangle here so I'm just gonna pull that out I didn't quite get enough time to oh I'm glad you can't hear it at all Vicki that actually makes me feel better I think being stuck inside, I've been getting a couple headaches. Well, one, I'm stuck inside, and two, um, I'm on my computer and my phone a lot and probably shouldn't be on it as much as I have been. So, and my sinuses have been bugging me because spring is here, which I love. We actually walked to the post office today. Um, so this die set, Valerie, sorry, is the new, brand new, just released today. Um, I apologize, I put the label in upside down, apparently. Ornate Layers dies, brand new. Uh, the number on them is 152726. Okay. I think I have most of this. The good news is I'm not doing this to the white. I probably should have made more of an effort to get this done before I went live, but that's okay. No problem. Hi Donna, welcome. Okay, so almost done here. There. Last couple holes. I think we got it. Okay. So I did die cut the white. Um, so I die cut it in thick white. And the reason I did that is because I want to use the blends. And the blends work best on not whisper white. They work best on thick white or sh shimmery white. But I find the thick white is the best color match to whisper white. And the reason I cut it is because I'm going to be lazy and not measure and I am just going to cut it off instead. So I find as long as you line it up, so I'm lining it up at around the half inch mark. And actually I'm, I was going to try and save the outer edges, I'm not going to. That would take too much effort. So, but I'm gonna just stay consistent and cut a half inch off all the way around. I didn't wanna to go to the trouble of measuring it and measuring it incorrectly. And the last one, we'll chop a half inch off here as well. Oh, 
Okay, and I have a nice little rectangle to inlay that's perfectly sized. Just like that. And I have tons and tons and tons of white scrap. That's why I was okay doing that. So I'm going to take the daisy stamp out of, sorry, it is out of the ornate style stamp set. I'm going to grab a block for it. If I can get it out of my case. I'm going to take it, I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to ink it up in memento. Now, when you're using the blends, you don't want to use our typical water um, based ink. You want to use Memento. It works best. So there you go. Fits perfectly. I could not repeat that if I tried. And I'm going to set it aside for a second to just give it a second to dry. And in here, this is going to come across, and looking at this, this probably should have been flipped the other way, but nobody will notice. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> then I'm going to take the Ornate Thanks, and just wanted to say you made my day, I think would be really cute. I can find it on here. Just wanted to say and you made my day it's over here. There. So the trick with these is that we want to make sure that we're going to cover them up. So I may have to pick something smaller or stick right to the edge. I think I think I'm just going to stick right over to the side and then I can do something up here with the flowers or something. So I'm going to grab another block. This time I'm going to grab the H block. So my trick, that's not much of a trick, is to line them up on my grid paper and then line up the edge of the block with the grid paper and then as long as you're watching the edge of the block it will always be straight. So I'm going to still stamp it in memento just because it's what's handy. And I have a tendency to stamp everything in the same color anyhow. And I'm going to stamp it right on the edge. And then I did not bring anything over to wash stamps with, so I'll just make do with peeling them off for a moment and then I can wash them after. There. And then you made my day. Ink that up. Just like that. Okay. Now, personally, I'd be okay with it just being over there on the edge like that. And see, it'll be covered by the top piece. This should be dry enough now to do our coloring. So because Bumblebee is a brand new color that hasn't been released yet, we don't have blends for it, but the closest um, and that I'm happy with is actually going to be Mango Melody. So I'm going to use my light Mango Melody blends. I'm going to color in the center of the flower. Then I'm going to accent with the dark. Which I think might be dying on me a little bit, but that's okay. And I'm just going to blend again with the light. And then we already have Old Olive for the stem and the leaf. 
So I do find with stems, when they're this thin, you want to have a very light touch. And I just won't add on the dark. I'll only do the light. You wouldn't notice the shading anyhow. Hopefully you guys can still see that. Let me know if you're having any issues seeing anything. So I just accent it with the dark. I do it right at the base and then I do it along the veining of the leaf and blend it in with the light again. And that's it for that. So I'm going to take my lovely little daisy here. Bentley would be so excited to see these. We planted sunflowers when this all first started. I thought it would be a great activity that was going to take us all hours. Yeah, it took 20 minutes maybe at the most. <laughs> we cleaned out all the dead house plants that we had. We planted sunflowers because he was very insistent that they had to be sunflowers. But, which is perfect because it means that when this is all over, I'll gain my pots all back. Um, and then uh, we can move them outside later. So, so I got that mounted on there. Now the next step is actually going to be adding dimensionals to this, but we're going to do it only on the one side. So if you flip this over, we want it to be on this side. So if you flip it over, it's going to be on my right side. And I'm going to use these dots here to line everything up along the seam. So as long as you're on that side of the dots, you're good to go. Okay. And I want it roughly centered. There. So you can see. And I... It depends on the card because of how ornate this frame is. I'm not going to put anything there. I'm just going to leave it alone. But you totally could if you wanted. You could put more DSP on. Um, that's usually what I do is I do a second pattern or I put a piece of embossed cardstock on there. But I really wanted that frame to stand out. So I think actually I'm going to leave that card as it is unless you guys have any suggestions. But I think... I think uh, this is great. So this is the new ornate garden suite just released today from Stampin' Up. So, and this is a an upright Z fold card, I believe it's called. It's definitely a Z fold. It's just that it's the upright version instead of going this way and opening up, it's going this way. Do you guys have any questions on, on how to make this? So if you want the stamps, for this, you can shop at my online store at lisahenderson.stampinup.net and it's the Ornate Thanks stamp set. The Ornate style um, stamp set, that was where we got the daisy out of. The Ornate Layers dies, we use this one here. And the paper as well, which is called the Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series Paper. So thank you so much for joining me and I will be back next week, uh, Wednesdays at three o'clock and I hope to see you then. Okay, thanks, bye now.